as I said, disasters are on the increase around the world. A good way, many people say, for looking at a disaster is to see that as a combination of two things. One, most obviously, is the phenomenon itself, such as the volcano in Iceland that's going off in Europe right now, uh, or, um, or the tsunami uh, that, that, that affected in 2004 uh, in Asia. That's the natural phenomenon. It's very hard to do anything about that, uh, if anything at all, other than try to get better at predicting. But the other side of the story, what you need for a disaster, is also vulnerability. People need to be vulnerable. And we're all vulnerable. We're all vulnerable to something happening in our lives. And that's the nature of reality. Some people are more vulnerable than others. And when they're vulnerable to a natural phenomenon, that's when you get a disaster. You can't have one without the other. And by definition, a disaster is an overwhelming event. So in the tragedy of the tsunami that affected uh, Asia, so many people were killed. What we saw this year in, in 2010 were two disasters. We've seen, well, several, not least China also, but two large ones. The first one in Haiti in early January killed, we think, something like 250,000 people, a terrible event. The uh, earthquake, uh, some five, six weeks later, that affected Chile, uh, was also a terrible event. That killed, we think, maybe upwards of a 1,000 people. Now, what's extraordinary there is that both are very bad, but clearly the earthquake in Haiti killed far more people. The phenomenon itself, the actual event of the earthquake, however, was 500 times more powerful in Chile. An extraordinary thought. 500 times more powerful in Chile, yet killed one 250th of the population. And why is that? People in Haiti were more vulnerable. Um, if you look at Haiti, it's well known that Haiti is the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere and has huge socio-economic problems. Uh, government is relatively weak. The systems of management, the governance of the country has not been good for a long time. Port-au-Prince was a disaster waiting to happen. Uh, with very large informal settlements, slums, squatter settlements, where people living in those places do the best they can to survive, and extraordinarily in most cases, in a system which somehow is fundamentally broken. So when the natural phenomenon hit the vulnerable condition, the disaster was so much worse. And that's what we see around the world. Those who are better prepared for natural disasters, who are less vulnerable, of course, are in a position where the disaster scale is lesser so. But we are, we are in a world that's changing. We're in a world right now that's rapidly urbanizing. Half the world is urban and growing. Uh, nine out of 10 people to be born in the next 30, 40 years will be born into cities. So the world's population will grow by something like two and a half billion, we think, who knows, but it's something like that. Nine tenths of those people will be born into cities. And those are cities like in Dhaka, in Southern Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa is the is the, well, Africa is the fastest growing continent, fastest urbanizing continent. If you think of Africa, you may think of a relatively rural place, and that's the case now, of course, but that's changing. And so we'll see Maputo in Mozambique, in Luanda, in Angola, Johannesburg, big cities uh, changing, growing. And of course, it won't be surprising to think that a large number of those people will not be wealthy. There'll be poorer people doing the best they can in very hard conditions, who actually are struggling and in adversity making a difference. But it's those people that are vulnerable. And then when we see that vulnerable condition hit a flood or a hurricane or a cyclone or a food situation, that's when we get the disaster.